I feel like we deserve a fun video this week after everything that's been happening, so I wanted to show you a film about newts from 1942. We have smooth newts, like you see in this film, on our farm. Here's one we found living in our silage sheets. I think this one is female. We popped her in some grass and she scuttled away. This is one of my favourite bits about working in agriculture, the connection that you have to nature and the world around you. Before watching this film, I didn't really know very much about newts, to be honest. I knew what they looked like, but I didn't know they lived so long. So I hope you enjoy it, and do put any stories you have about newts down below. A clear idea of the difference in the newt family can be gained by looking at the three kinds of newt shown here. You'll notice that in each species, the female in the top row is larger than the male in the bottom row. Come from the diagram to the living creature. First, the smooth newt. This is the female. And this is the male smooth newt. Much smaller and slightly different is the palmate newt. You see the female here. And this is the smaller male with his almost webbed foot. Larger than either of the other kinds is the crested newt. The female, as you see, has no crest. But the male has two fine crests down his head and back and along his tail. The salamander is closely related to the newts. So is the axolotl. These creatures are distributed all over the northern part of the world. We find axolotls here. Salamanders live in all these regions. And newts are found in a great many countries where the symbols are now being put in. The life history of the smooth newt is typical of the life histories of all the other species. The smooth newt is small. The male is about three and a half inches long. The female about four and a half inches. Newts like almost any sort of country to live in, so long as there is plenty of grass and it's fairly moist. When the weather is dry, the newts curl up together in a heap under the grass so that their skins remain damp. They hunt through the grass for food. One of their favourite foods is a worm. This the newt grips and crunches up with its jaws, which bear many small, sharp teeth. This kind of country, with plenty of trees and grass, is suitable for newts. When cold weather begins to come in, the newts go to sleep under a stone, or in some other safe place. If you lift the stone in winter, the newt beneath hardly stirs. Here it will stay until spring comes with warm weather. Now the newt will wake up. First, it peeps out carefully to make sure no enemies are about. Then it comes creeping out. If a newt is three or more years old, it now makes off through the grass for the nearest pond. The females are usually the first to go through the surface of the water into the pond below. After their long winter sleep, they're ravenously hungry and on the lookout for a meal. This one has found a nice juicy worm. After the females, the male newts enter the pond. They have a distinctive spotted coat. Newts take air into their lungs and every now and then have to rise to the surface of the pond to breathe. After taking in plenty of air, he comes down again to renew his search for food. He sees a female having a good meal of water fleas and sets off to join her. Now they're side by side, you can see how different the male and female are in size and colouring. The female is on the left, the male is on the right. His crest is distinctive. The male newt now produces sperms inside the body. This diagram shows the stages of production. These sperms are placed in little packets, and the packets are deposited in the water. 
the movement of the water brings the packets near the female, who has produced a large number of eggs inside her body. She seizes the packet of sperms and empties it. Each egg will in time join with the sperm and be fertilized by it. The fertilized egg now begins to develop into a newt. The female newt lays the fertilized eggs singly on the leaves of water weeds. A newt egg is rather difficult to see because a leaf is usually wrapped around it. Here is another egg within its envelope of jelly, very neatly wrapped up. From a distance, you can hardly see it at all. If there are no weeds about, the egg and its protective jelly may be laid on a stone. From an egg laid on a weed, it is very easy to see the newt tadpole developing inside the jelly. The development takes between two and three weeks, according to the weather conditions. After a time, the jelly gets covered with mud. This mud helps to hide the movement of the tadpole inside, for now it begins to be very active. It's becoming coloured too, with spots on its back. You can see its eyes and the gills it will breathe through when it hatches. When the tadpole is fully developed, it searches for a weak spot in the jelly and breaks out. In close view, you can see its heart pumping blood all over its body and into the plumed gills by which the tadpole breathes in the water. In a few days, it will begin to feed on the tiny water insects which swarm in the pond. In about ten days, the tadpole's front legs begin to work through its skin here. Now both of the front feet have come through and the tadpole is a lively little creature searching the weeds for the small water animals on which it feeds. As it grows, its gills get larger and draw more oxygen from the air which is dissolved in the water. Now it begins to develop its back legs. A back foot is working through the skin here. In this picture, both legs are through. You can see the tadpole's body has changed in shape. Its gills have become even larger. In this stage, the tadpole can eat quite large water fleas. But as the tadpole moves rather slowly and the flea rather quickly, it often misses its dinner. It got that one. At this age, instead of getting bigger, the gills are beginning to get smaller. The tadpole looks up a great deal to the surface of the pond. At length, it leaves the water weeds and rises to the surface. Here it stays for a time, making up its mind to leave the water. It has developed lungs with which it can breathe in the air, while its gills have nearly gone. Compare its appearance now with its appearance five weeks ago. It has passed through its metamorphosis successfully. At length the young newt, for it's no longer a tadpole, makes for the shore. It comes through the surface of the water and begins to crawl out of the pond. It pauses while it feels the air on its skin and it must now breathe with its lungs. The world outside the pond is a strange place and the young newt hesitates before it enters the long grass. It's now a tiny creature about the length of a man's thumbnail. It will take three years before it becomes fully developed like the newt beside it on the ground. At three years old, newts return to the pond in spring to breed. 
The smooth newt is typical of the tailed amphibia which can be found in most parts of the world. Newts of all kinds have a life history similar to that of the smooth newt. 